Hey guys, what is happening? My name is Karath, and long time no see. I haven't done much content like this recently, but there, I mean, this morning I woke up, I saw this, and I was like, okay, like, there's no one who's actually posted a summary. There's a lot of changes that are actually happening within the Australian community, and this is the part that I'm going to go into later. So, this is pretty much just a big summary, and I guess a look at the history and why it led down this way. I have believed ever since, for about two to three years ago, gambling would have led down here. Without any significant changes, this would have eventually happened. It finally did. I'm like, yes, because it's more legislation and le and regulation, but I'll go into that more in a bit of detail. So, firstly, I guess we'll go into the basic timeline of events. So, we have to understand for Valve, CSGO was not actually the first game that they actually did where they released skins when you open up crates. And that stemmed back to TF2 and Dota 2, and the arguments were still there. Is that K's opening... To Valve, they defined it, it wasn't gambling because you're getting something of no monetary value. And that is the same argument used for games that are based within countries which have stricter, which also have strict gambling regulations, I guess, which I should say, RuneScape. Any, any gambling country within Southeast Asia, they always have, I guess, I guess, Japan, I guess, not, I shouldn't say Southeast Asia, because Japan is not Southeast Asia, Japan to, uh, and Korea, they have very, very strict rules on gambling, and that's how Valve defined it, and I go, okay, they defined it as such, and that's why it was able to be run for so long before there was a class action lawsuit that was named towards Valve, so apparently Valve was named in two lawsuits, and one of them was brought on by a mom who said Sun had lost significant amounts of money gambling on video games, including, I guess, CSGO, eventually Valve have finally, in the last month, have gone, okay, towards gambling websites, you can't run these anymore. And I guess as well, this is, this comes hand in hand with the time where it's like, Valve is being hammered with lawsuits, number one. Number two, we found out how many, law how many of those gambling websites were actually reads. That was, I think, the double whammy, and... I, I can't believe it took so long for people to realize that gambling websites could have been rigged or people didn't even suspect it and people would still put their money in, but that's that's how the cookie crumbled. That There were unfortunately websites that could manipulate the odds, I guess, so to speak, and as a result, this has occurred. Now, the majority of them have closed now. After all the information's come out, the majority of them have closed with these also cease and desist letters. Um, I remember seeing people calling them unprofessional. Some of them have been unprofessional, some of them have not, I guess. It, it depends on the way you look at it, but apparently they it they are letters, and CSGO Lounge is one of the rare few to remain open. I believe they posted something today which would trigger this conversation saying that they're actually getting a gambling license to actually operate within countries. And that is something that I've always wanted to happen, is that gambling you should have restrictions on who's allowed to gamble, and yeah, you should be over a certain age. Now, I'm not going to say that some, <laughs> as soon as you hit 18, you suddenly become way more responsible, you suddenly decide everything, no, it, it doesn't become like that, you're still addicted to things. I mean, I, I can say that at the age of 22, I'll still be addicted to things that at the age of 17, I was addicted to. Like, it, these things are addictive, and that's okay. And legislation is just kind of going, you know what, now you're maturely an adult, you're responsible as an adult, you have to take consequences for your own actions now. That's that's literally it. Because what we saw was, how many kids do we see that didn't have any understanding of financial repercussions, did not have any understanding of what was going on? Like, that's the problem, see? Like, I mean, the ABC article briefly touched on it, and, and you can kind of argue both ways. I mean, you can argue, oh, the parents should have been restricting, they should have been checking, but at the same time, I, five, five, six years ago, if I was a parent and my kid was playing Counter-Strike, I'd be like, oh, that's cool, 1.6, I mean, source, I mean, nothing wrong with that, kid's not going to be charging my credit card, and then suddenly you see, <laughs> these days, kids are charging so much money to the credit card, it's, it's the same problem, you know, with the iStores, iTunes store, you know, kids charging on those freemium apps, man, it's, one argument is, you know, regulation, you shouldn't make it so easy for kids, easy for kids to do this and the other side parents should be more responsible it's a, it's a two way thing at the end of the day you got, you've got to regulate it and you've got to control the kids so I'm not, I'm not saying that it's just one person's problem it's it's a two way problem yeah, um, yeah because I mean skins when they came out back in August 14, 2013 I'm not going to deny 
that this made so many people come into the scene because it made it made me come back. CSGO, I believe, from 2012, 2013 in the Wild West eras, I guess, was a complete garbage game. Like, that's, that's my personal views on it. I'm not sure how other people playing inside then viewed it. I was playing it since closed beta. I did not enjoy it. I just quit because I didn't enjoy it. And I came back and then it started picking up again. I started enjoying it and that's where I am now. Okay. So, I guess, what have we learnt from all of this history? Because I've just gone over something very, very long. It's given us a big increase in viewership. I mean, I can, I guess we can take a look at CG this season. We can take a look at any Australian scene that's been on CSGO Lounge. Ooh, it's only big viewers. But we can also see what happens very, very early on. DDoS attacks. And players are offered a significant amount to actually throw matches. And unfortunately, that will continue to happen. I mean, we've seen it happen in America where people are paid to play the game. In Oceania, we're not even paid to play the game. We're doing this for fun. So what happens if someone offers the right amount and then suddenly that person is actually poor? Like that is still a problem we're going to be encountering. If a person's not interested in the game anymore and just wants to quit, who's going to say they're not going to throw it? So still a lot of issues that need to be worked on, but I mean, that's what we've learned and we're walking on those eggshells at the moment carefully. Legally, this entire time, we were operating on wrongs. I mean, the argument that skins had no value tree, had no money value. Hello, Valve State Market, you can sell the skins for money? Like, it, it was one of the weirdest arguments. Like, oh, we're not actually valuing the skins. The community makes values for the skins. I'm just like, that is still the same thing. It's it's the supply and demand. It's a commodity. It's now a good. You have to regulate it. They even charge tax on it. So, so legally, skins, yes, they were worth something. So technically, it can be enforced as gambling. And I know a lot of people are criticizing, once again, I mean, everyone's been hearing about the Australian government, the Senator Nick Xenophon. I mean, he's now introducing a gambling restriction law on games like Counter-Strike. And a lot of people are like, haha, it's going to be like, oh, there's, there's Pidgeys lined up in Pokemon Go. Don't even get me started on Pokemon Go, by the way. But there's three Pidgeys lined up. That's a slot game, right? But a lot of people didn't look into it is that the legislation will now make it illegal for games to seek payment for items of varying value according to chance. So that means that you could probably buy the skins, but you can't open up crates anymore. And for me, that's... I guess that's kind of sad and that's kind of good at the same time. I mean... That's kind of good, because, I mean, crates, they dropped, you open them up, I mean, I guess CSGO, I mean, I guess Valve aren't going to get anything out of it, guess what, they're going to have to change their business model then. If your whole business model is working on, you know, getting kids to spend, I don't know how much cash on opening crates, because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I've dropped a couple of hundred on crates as well, but I've dropped, what, 300, 400, I stopped, and that was money that I had in my account, I didn't go steal from my parents. Because this legislation simply makes it the same case as it is in Japan. It You can't open things according to the chance. You have to just buy it directly from the store. And that works for Valve. You know, they can actually put a market value on skins now. Every single new skin release, according to grade, you know, if it's a poorer grade, it can be one ninety nine. I guess it can also force skin creators to make better skins. You know, it's the higher competition. Now you get that whole shabam and shamazzle, I guess, that skins can go into. Now you can suddenly have like really, really cool skins were worth like, you know, the gold ones we valued maybe 15. You still have the souvenir crates that are coming out, so they're more valued, yada, yada, yada. Also, there'll be minimum age requirements on paying to play. So I guess if at not, if the crate thing is not enforced, so like, you know, you can still open crates and everything, got to buy these crates. At the very least, you have to prove that you're 18. That's okay by me. I'm more than happy as long as it's, I don't know, done through either an Australian website, because I'd rather not do it through Steam. I don't know, through either Australian website, which is competent, which is very, very hard to ask, I guess, or doing it through Steam through a secure way that doesn't isn't taken over by Russians, I guess. Yeah, these are things that, I guess, once again, it comes back to, well, I'm an adult, I don't need this. That's cool. I'm an adult, I don't need these because I know what I'm getting into. Let's think about, like, all the kids that the parents don't understand what's going on. Because my dad has no idea what's happening in Counter-Strike. He doesn't care for it. In fact, he hates it. That's, that's the whole thing at the end of the day. You've got a lot of kids who don't care. you got a lot of parents of kids who don't care for it, who don't understand. And, yes, they should. 
but unfortunately I don't and I think we're not in a position to criticize parents unless we're parents ourselves I don't, um, I guess if you're a father or you know mother inside the community and you go this is not my view on it and yada 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 go for it please comment back on this but my personal view is until we actually hit parenthood we can't really comment on it because we don't understand how difficult it is we, we've never been in that situation before go figure I've never been in the situation before I had to raise a kid when we were kids we we hid things so it's a two it's a two way street at the end of the day and it's good that I believe it's good that we finally come to here in all honesty because now, at the very least, everything's becoming legal, everything's becoming on board. It's a lot of people been blaming, you know, the ABC article, the poor kids, I can't remember his name, but it was being hammered. I'm like, why are you hammering the poor kid? He's under 18, he made a poor choice. He reported it towards the ABC. They have the right to report on these stories because just because you're making $10,000 or $20,000 and going, I'm a responsible adult, doesn't mean that a kid's losing money. For every person that's making money, there's the site owner that's making a lot more money and there's a person that's losing money. That's that's equation of gambling. I mean, has anyone gone to a casino and gone, I can make a living off the casino? It's it's the same thing. We're not being caring because there's been a gravy train and we've just rolled it with it for too long.